It was believed that a human brain only uses 10% of its capacity, but is it true? Have you ever imagined that if we only utilize such a small fraction of the brain, then how much potential it actually possesses? What if you're able to achieve superhuman strength, or levitate objects, or read other people's minds, or even control them? That is exactly what is shown in the movie Lucy, starring Scarlett Johansson, where she can go into the deep chasms of her brain and do things which are not possible for an ordinary human to do. In this movie, we were shown that when she goes beyond using just 10% of her brain, she is able to teleport, control the natural elements and people, and even her own metabolism. Isn't that just amazing? Well, as great as it sounds, According to Barry Gordon at John Hopkins School of Medicine in Baltimore, the alluring idea, 10% myth, is so wrong that it is almost laughable. Hmm, that makes us wonder now, doesn't it? Is this myth real or not? Let's have a look. Have you ever thought why we have not accessed the rest of the brain despite the advancements in the field of research? Well. The simple answer is that we indeed use more than just 10% of the brain and that our brain is active almost all of the time. This can be confirmed through neuroimaging techniques like PET scans and MRIs that show us the brain in action and it is seen that the brain lights up even during simple tasks such as walking, talking and also during resting. Even during sleep, some regions such as the frontal cortex that controls higher level thinking and self-awareness are active. Although at a given moment, not all of the brain's regions are constantly firing, it is the same concept that we don't require the functioning of all of our muscles at one time. In addition to this, if the 10% myth were true, people who suffer from brain damage in a part of their brain due to an accident or stroke would probably not notice any real effect if the unused parts of the brain were removed. It won't make a huge difference. But this isn't true. In reality, there isn't a single area of the brain that can be damaged without any noticeable physical or mental consequences, however minor they may be. One interesting case of a 19th century railroad worker named Phineas Cage suffered from a traumatizing accident where a spike went right across his skull. Surprisingly, it didn't kill him and what was even more surprising that his memories and skills were still intact. Although many of his friends reported that his personality had changed so much that it was almost like he wasn't the same person anymore. This was because the damping iron destroyed much of the frontal lobe of his brain resulting in his drastic personality change. The human brain represents about 3% of the body's weight and is composed of neurons and glial cells. Different neurons perform different functions, but the major one is to help process and transmit information in the form of electrical impulses and the glial cells surround the neurons, thus providing them with support and insulation. Now to keep the brain working by the rapid firing of millions of neurons, it needs a heavy amount of energy, which is around 20% of the total body's energy very little evolutionary sense to feed this organ such a huge amount of energy just to utilize such a tiny fraction. The human brain is just an organ and like any other one, it is affected by a person's lifestyle. Here are some points that help in improving the brain function. Just like our muscles need some sort of physical activity to keep them from getting sore, our brain too needs some sort of activity to keep it going. Try solving the Rubik's Cube or challenge your friend to a game of chess. That will get your mind thinking and running. Researchers have shown that people who used brain training exercises reduced the risk of dementia by 29%. That's a lot. I know you've heard this a lot, but having a balanced diet is extremely important. It takes care of our brain's health. Food rich in vitamin E, omega-3 fatty acids and antioxidants are really good for proper functioning of the brain. Exercising, another thing that you must have heard, and cardiovascular activities like brisk walking reduces the risk of decline in brain function. 
Hence it is obvious from the information that it is not that we use just 10% of our brain but it's just that we simply understand 10% of how it actually functions. That is it for this week's video. We hope you liked it and if you did then don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. If you want to know more about this topic then don't forget to read our article Is there a locked door in the human brain? The link is put up in the description down below. This is BioTimes signing out. Hope you all have a wonderful week ahead.